It's been a busy day for President Trump, from signing executive orders to getting his cabinet approved. We have your full update on what's new in Washington. The UK Supreme Court ruled on Brexit today. Find out what it means for Britain and the UK. And Oscar nominations came out today. La La Land has tied an Oscar record for total nominations. We have a special guest here to give predictions and talk about snubs. This is Citrus TV News. This is Citrus TV News Live at 6, your campus news leader. Up first, Donald Trump has decided he is keeping James Comey as his FBI director. Welcome to News Live at 6. I'm Nick Papantonis. And I'm Jackie Prager. Comey played a big part in the election, making both sides angry at points. The head of the FBI upset Republicans with his decision not to indict Hillary Clinton, but then decided to restart the investigation on Clinton days before the election. Comey is currently investigating Trump's ties to Russia. This will keep him at the center of that investigation. Police are still searching for two men after a police officer was shot 10 times in DeWitt last night. An Onondaga County deputy was undercover to bust a drug deal when the deputy was attacked by the buyers. The officer was transported to Upstate University Hospital with no serious injuries. Police say they are still looking for the shooters, but that the dealer has been arrested. And construction is set to begin on a new apartment complex that hopes to bring positive change to the Syracuse area. A 50-unit apartment building will be built on Syracuse's north side, specifically for low-income families and people with mental health disorders. According to CNY Services, this is the only development in Syracuse that reserves units for people with mental health disorders. A Binghamton man is hoping to make the city great again. He's filed a request to rename the city's main street, quote, Trump Street, saying the president would give the city extra attention. The man says he has gotten positive feedback from at least one city councilman. A spokesperson at the Binghamton mayor's office says the city is not considering the proposal. And it's time to get a first check on the weather. It was a slightly rainy or snowy day today. Gilat Malamed is in studio with the details. Gilat? Yeah, Nick, right now it's still snowing outside, believe it or not. 30 degrees, it feels more like the low 20s because we have that double-digit winds at 10 miles per hour. When will this snow stop and what is the rest of the week going to look like? I'll have the answers coming up in my full forecast. And coming up on Citrus TV News Live at 6, a governor collapses during his State of the State address. Find out what happened. Plus, President Trump has signed a new executive order with massive implications for the environment. Those stories and more after the break. When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move. So I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day, I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cooked my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. Every time I hear the alarm bell go off in school, I think it's an air raid. A lot of houses in our neighborhood have been destroyed. I like to close my ears and sing songs whenever the bombs come close. I'm worried our new neighbors won't like us. But I know it's all going to be worth it. I just want my family to be safe. But these are not my these words. These are not my words. These are not my words.
If you see news happening on campus, in Syracuse, or across the nation, call the Citrus TV Newsroom, 315-443-1177, or tweet at Citrus TV News, your campus news leader. Senate Democrats say they will offer a proposal to spend $1 trillion on transportation and infrastructure over 10 years. The plans are similar to what Trump proposed in his campaign. Democrats say the proposal would create 15 million jobs over 10 years and would give over $200 billion to roads and bridges alone. Although this is what Trump called for, it may create some tension between the new president and Congress. The bill would anger Republicans who do not approve of more government spending. President Trump has signed two executive orders that will allow the construction of the Keystone XL and Dakota Access Pipelines. Keystone XL Pipeline was rejected by Obama after environmental concerns and protests by Native Americans over the Dakota Pipeline that resulted in its rejection. Trump called himself an environmentalist, but many environmental groups are ready to move, ready to protest the move. And Minnesota Governor Mark's uh, Mark Dayton has been diagnosed with prostate cancer. Dayton said he found out last week, but said he is still fit to perform as governor and will finish his term. This comes after he collapsed last night during his annual State of the State address. He finished a speech this morning and then told reporters of the diagnosis. Dayton says he will be visiting the Mayo Clinic next week. Donald Trump believes he lost the popular vote because of illegal, illegal immigrants. Trump's press secretary said that the president believes there are three to five million illegal immigrants voted in his election, in this election. Spicer offered no evidence to support that claim. Possible terrorist links are resurfacing surfacing between the Berlin truck attack in ISIS in December and the U.S. strike on Libyan camps a month later. German foreign intelligence says two flags Libyan phone numbers suggest that there was communication between the ISIS attacker and the Libyan camp soon before the incident in Berlin. The following airstrike killed around 80 ISIS fighters. The U.S. is yet to confirm that the external plotters involved in Berlin were killed during the strike. The U.K. Supreme Court has ruled that Parliament must vote on whether the government can start the Brexit process. The vote is not expected to stop Britain from leaving the EU. The anti-Brexit Labour Party said they will not vote against the will of the people. The court also ruled that the Scottish Parliament and Welsh and Northern Ireland assemblies do not have a say in the vote. And China has, arrest, has asserted it will defend its rights to the South China Sea after Trump administration vowed to prevent China from taking territory. The South China Sea remains an important shipping route and is contested territory between China, Vietnam and the Philippines. White House spokesman Sean Spicer said the U.S. will make sure to protect its interests in the region. Trump's comments break uh, years of U.S. foreign policy as former President Obama refused to take a side. And 30 schools in eastern Mosul reopened on Sunday after two years under jihadist rule. The UN Children's Fund says over 16,000 students are now able to continue their education. UNICEF's support of Iraqi rehabilitation includes providing school supplies and anti-violent awareness programs. More than 40 other schools are expected to reopen in coming weeks as the security situation improves. And Israel will build 2,500 new homes in the West Bank. This is the first move the nation has made since the inauguration of President Trump, who says he'll be more tolerant of Israeli settlements than former President Obama. The move is angering Palestinians who say the settlements undermine hopes for peace and take the land they hope will be a part of their independent country. And the Office of Civil Rights in Syracuse for, uh, is in Syracuse for a Title IX investigation. A student claims that the university did not respond to a sexual assault case. Jenna Babiak has the full story. Um, educating the entire public is the way to that these things are going to be um, improved and um, bettered on college campuses. On June 22, 2016, an investigation was opened for Syracuse University's handling of a sexual assault case. A former student filed a formal complaint against SU, alleging that the university did not respond promptly or equitably to a report of sexual assault made in May 2015. They try their best to hide them to keep the, what's the word? the reputation of the college like at its best. Um, I actually don't really know anything about the rape case. I didn't um, hear anything or read anything about it in any um, publications or emails or anything.
The complaint was lodged with the Office of Civil Rights, the federal agency which oversees Title IX. The law prohibits institutions that received federal aid from discrimination based on sex. I really don't know much. Um, Syracuse has done a pretty good job of covering it up and not really releasing a lot of information to the public um, until recently, but even then, not too much has been released, so I'm still not really know what's going on. Two community meetings open to students, faculty, and staff are being held in Shine today and tomorrow. During the meetings, the representatives will discuss the office's role in the investigation and will accept questions and information from those attending. Many female students expressed at the forum that they have felt uncomfortable on campus and have tried using the DPS escort service, calling and requesting rides or walking escorts, but no one would come and they would be forced to walk home alone. Some professors felt that they lacked training in how to deal with Title IX violations. As a female student, like especially a college student, like I feel like I should know what's going on on campus about sexual assault, especially I think the statistic is like one in five, so that's just like scary that I don't know. I think that, especially as girls, like we should know like, like what's going on and anything that goes on on campus, any violent acts or um, sexual assaults should be more publicized. Although students expressed contentment with the transparency of university emails about dangers on campus, most students still feel uninformed. Jenna Babiak, Citrus TV News. Representatives will be holding another meeting tomorrow at 9.30 in Shine. From the Citrus TV Weather Center, this is SU's most accurate weather forecast. It was a wet day today here in Syracuse and across much of the northeast. As you can see, the state of New York almost completely covered with snow. You have that rain down to the south and east in the city and Long Island. Looking ahead at tomorrow, though, at 4 p.m., look at that. No precipitation over the northeast at all. A great 24-hour turnaround. Tonight, SU takes on Wake Forest at the Dome, 8 p.m. tip-off. It's going to be snowing then still 30 degrees, feels like the low 20s, and the snow is going to continue until midnight. So definitely wear snow boots to the game and bundle up. Current temperatures across the area, low 30s across the board. Rome was the highest up at 33. Luckily, nobody was in the 20s today. Waking up tomorrow, 8 a.m., 30 degrees, going to feel like 22 with those winds at 10 miles per hour. Moving into the rest of tomorrow, low 30s, mid 30s, it's going to be really humid, but the good news is, again, you're not going to have the precipitation we saw today. Looking ahead at the rest of the week, tomorrow, th high 37, low 33. Thursday, we're going to see some rain with a high of 40 and a low of 31. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, lots of snow there, so definitely not the nicest of weeks. Well, thanks, God. So it was really gray today and all last week. Are we going to expect to see the clouds at least clearing up at all? or Right, not for a little bit, unfortunately. In the middle of next week, right around February 1st, actually, that's when we're going to start seeing some sun again. And some of us are going to be going to the game tonight. What right. kind of weather are we expecting on our walk to and from? Yeah, it's definitely going to be snowing the whole time to and from. And it is going to be cold, but it does get hot in the dome, so definitely layers is going to be the key. All right, thanks, thanks a lot. So much. Up next on Citrus TV News, all of the Oscars news you need to know, plus predictions and, of course, the snubs. And writer at Saturday Night Live is out after an offensive tweet during the inauguration. We'll be right back. Your daughter just had her first breakup. Do you A, put yourself in her shoes, B, console her, don't worry, sweetie. This is going to happen a lot. Or C, find her a new boyfriend. Nice single boys. <laughs> that was weird. As a parent, there are no perfect answers. But you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. Well, Thomas, you've got prediabetes. But with more exercise and a change in diet, it can be reversed. I've tried exercising. It, it just makes me hungry for bacon. I love bacon, too. And who really likes to exercise? Not me. <laughs> me neither. Nobody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we're good? What? Oh, you still have prediabetes. Big time. 
Come on, it's not that hard. My big man fingers are having a problem with these little tiny buttons. <laughs> Whoa, watch it there. Your blood pressure's gonna go through the roof. Tell me about it. I'm trying to learn how to get it down. Instead, it keeps going up. High blood pressure can increase the risk for heart attack or stroke. Learn how to keep yours at a healthy range. Ever hear a voice command? Just say, text Barbershop to 97779. That's not what I said. Just give me that. Now my blood pressure's up. <sighs> You've messed up your son's haircut. Mom? Do you A, try to fix it? Like it never happened. B, work with what you've got. Or C, show solidarity. As a parent, there are no perfect answers. But you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. You're watching Citrus TV News with Jackie Prager. Nick Papantonis, and Gilad Mohamed with weather. Citrus TV News continues now. The head of Formula One is out. Bernie Ecclestone was removed from his position today. The company chairman, the new company chairman, excuse me, says the sport needed a quote fresh start as it plans to expand to more places around the world in upcoming weeks. Ecclestone has been offered an advisory position at the company. And Kroger has announced it plans to hire 10,000 workers. These new jobs will range from part-time clerks and cashiers to department heads. Last year, the grocery chain added 12,000 employees, which included 9,000 veterans. In less than a decade, Kroger has added more than 86,000 jobs. But Kroger continues to face tough competition from Amazon, Walmart, and other grocers like Whole Foods. A Saturday Night Live writer has been suspended for a tweet that criticized President Donald Trump's young son. Katie Rich was blasted on social media for comparing 10-year-old Barron Trump to a school shooter. A petition was created demanding NBC fire Rich, who deleted the tweet and sent out an apology where she said, quote, I deeply regret my actions. NBC has not commented on the suspension. And Oscar nominations are out, and La La Land has made history. The film got 14 nominations. That's tied for the all, most all-time with Titanic and All About Eve. Joining us to give his views on the nominations, and maybe some of his picks as a filmmaker and Oscars guru, Matt Saka. Matt, welcome to Citrus TV. Thank you for having now, me. Now, to start off, La La Land, everybody's going crazy for it. It has 14 nominations. Why is it the favorite for Best Picture, and what might be the upset? Well, the achievement is remarkable because this is an original, old-fashioned love letter to classic Hollywood musicals, and it managed to tie the record with a literal Titanic blockbuster and one of the most iconic comedies of all time. Um, so it's really appealing to all different kinds of demographics. Damien Chazelle swung for the fences, and he certainly knocked it out of the park. It's really incredible. I went and saw it, and I loved every minute of it. Um, so here's hoping. But what about the snubs? We see that every year someone, everyone thinks is going to win, and then, you know, they just get snubbed. Who do you think is up to that? The most egregious snub that I have seen this year is absolutely Amy Adams for Arrival. Uh, she gave a completely layered and nuanced performance that throughout the film almost seems as if you're watching two completely separate characters. Uh, besides that, Anything that had to do with silence, uh, that film proved that when you combine Martin Scorsese, his passion project of 28 years, Andrew Garfield, and Liam Neeson, you only get one nomination. <laughs> and for the first time in, I think, three years now, we have a not Oscars so white. Who, can you tell us a bit about the performances of the minority actors and actresses and what you, you know, anybody that's favored to win? Absolutely. First off, that's just absolutely incredible because this is the first year ever where every single acting category has, uh, is representing a person of color. Um, as for favorites, Viola Davis is in the lead clearly for Fences and she gave a tremendous performance, well deserved. Uh, competing against her, funny enough, is Naomi Harris for Moonlight. And um, in Best Actress, Ruth Nega managed a surprise nomination for Loving. Um, she is more of an outside chance, but Viola Davis and Naomi Harris are front runners in their categories. Thanks very much for joining us, Matt. All right, let's take time to get a check on sports. Coming up on sports, men's basketball looks to break their losing streak, and Syracuse football's schedule for next fall has been released. Find out what Babers squad has in store for them and more sports on the Hill after the break. 
Hey, look, it's those guys. Uh, Are you good to drive? I'm fine. How many did you have? I should be fine. You should be? Go and step out of the vehicle for me. See ya, buddy. Good luck. So it turns out, buzz driving and drunk driving, they're the same thing. And it costs around $10,000. So not worth it. There are 16 million children struggling with hunger in America. This is a serious problem, but one we can solve. Visit feedingamerica.org to help. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're feeding America. I already knew that I was going to go to college, you know, from a young age. I definitely want to major in political science, become the mayor or something, make the situation better for other people. My name is Justin, and I am your dividend. Got a quarter? Visit aarp.org slash caregiving for information on how to provide even better care for the person who wants to care of you. And now, your Citrus TV Sports Report. Welcome back. I'm Brianna Adams with your Sports on the Hill. Now, men's basketball returns home to the Carrier Dome after a rough road trip facing ranked teams in UNC and Notre Dame. Bayheim Sponge continue their conference play tonight as they face ACC foe Wake Forest in hopes to break their two-game losing streak. The Demon Deacons are coming off of a losing streak, a 25-game streak against ACC teams on the road. Wake Forest broke that streak against NC State 93-88, with forward John Collins leading the team to victory with 21 points and 9 rebounds. Now, despite Syracuse's struggles on the road, Tyler Lydon and Tyus Battle continue to find success at the basket. Both players coming off high-scoring games, Lydon led the Orange with 29 points against the Fighting Irish, while, while Battle shot 17 in the loss. Coach Beheim voiced his opinions on the recent road struggles after the game in South Bend. But we can't win with three guys from the center ball. You know, we have to have more guys. Uh, I can't even describe how disappointed I am in a couple guys on our team. The way it goes. Now the conference match will tip off at 7 tonight in the Carrier, Carrier Dome. During the game, the Carrier Dome will honor the Hoops for the Stars program. Hoops for the Stars teams up Syracuse University and the National Grid Foundation to work together to improve the education and life experience of local youth. The program will bring more than 150 young students to the Carrier Dome to enjoy the Syracuse Wake Forest match. Now, looking ahead to the fall already, Syracuse Athletics have just released the 2017 schedule for Dino Babers football squad. The schedule highlights two tough contests, a home game against the reigning national championship team Clemson, a team that defeated the Orange 54 to nothing back in November. Now also Syracuse will travel to Louisiana to face another tough team, SEC team Louisiana State University. Now in conference games, Syracuse will face Pitt in the Carrier Dome. After a historic game at Heinz Field, Syracuse and Pitt collectively scored the highest scoring game in college football history, 76 to 61, a basketball score and a Pitt victory. The season will start on September 2nd. Now women's basketball senior guard Alexis Peterson has been having a dominant season so far. The point guard's consistent success 21 games in has given her national recognition. Peterson has been named to the mid-season watch list for the Ann Myers Drysdale Award. Every year, this award recognizes the top women's college player in the country for basketball. P 
Peterson's resume includes the team's most recent success against 14-ranked Miami, dominating the team 81-48. to Now in this huge upset, Alexis Peterson knocked 24 points down against the Hurricanes. This was her 15th game scoring 20-plus points with two games in the 30s. Peterson looks to continue the success with the matchup against number 19 Virginia Tech this Sunday in Blacksburg. Now, Syracuse women's lacrosse head coach Gary Gate will be taking on more responsibility as the season gets closer to opening day. Gate has been chosen as interim commissioner of the United Women's Lacrosse League. When asked how he will tackle it all, he said that his first priority will always be Syracuse, yet he says it will give him a chance to give opportunities for female athletes to continue to play elite lacrosse after college. Gate is in his 10th season coaching the Orange with a record of 150-48, to 48, including five straight trips to the Final Four. Now, now, well, also, before you speak, headed over to the NHL, both the Islanders and the, Predator and the Sabres will play tonight. Both the Sabres and Islanders are tied for lowest points in the Eastern Conference. So these two teams are playing against Columbus and Nashville. Nashville coming off a three-game winning streak and Columbus coming off an OT win. I was so excited to get to my <laughs> big burning question. I am sorry. But Syracuse hasn't been doing too well this year, something that we're not very used to. And tonight is a big game. All of them are big games if we hope to make it to March Madness. What's your prediction? I think that they will come out strong. They're at home. Their defense at home, for some reason, is a lot better than when they're on the road. Given the road games have been a little tough recently with UNC and Notre Dame, but the zone's going to come out to play. They know that they got to bounce back from this because they're three and four in the conference as well. If they want to bid to the tournament, they have to do good tonight. If well, only we could take that carrier dome and move it everywhere. That would be fantastic. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> Problem well, solved. Hopefully they'll pull out a win tonight, but thanks so much. And we've been over the best movies of the year, but what about the worst? Stay tuned. Sorry about that. This is the story of a boy who didn't talk for a long time. The boy liked things to always be the same. Any changes would scare and upset him. The unknown was an unfriendly place. The boy was very sensitive to lights and sounds. So he built secret hiding places where they couldn't get in. The boy didn't like looking people in the eye. He wasn't trying to be mean. It just made him Hi, feel hey, how's it going? What's up? Sometimes you have um, yeah, weather. We're going to do wake up weather. Again. One wake up weather care. One day I found out I have something called autism. My family got me help. Slowly, I found my voice and learned all the way I could live with it better. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at autismspeaks.org. Welcome back, you live. So what are we looking to wear for tomorrow morning? Well, the temperature tomorrow is gonna be the same as today, so you can wear whatever you wore today, but you won't need any snow boots, rain boots, or umbrellas, so that's the good news there. Well, great, thanks so Thank much. Thank you very much. So, the Oscar nominations were released, and so were the Razzies. So joining us again to talk about this is Matt Saka. I look at some of these uh, movies on this list in front of me. Batman vs. Superman, Zoolander 2, Medea is on that list. How bad were these films? Pretty much cinematic atrocities, I would say, um, and for a completely different reasons. Some of them just had extremely lofty expectations and failed to meet every single one of them, while others didn't even have a high bar to fill and still managed to fail. Well, great. Well, we'll be sure to look out for that. But for today, that's all we have for today. I'm Jackie Prager. And I'm Nick Papinturnus. Be sure to check us out online and on YouTube and our website. Have a great night, Syracuse.